Now the next part of this is where to place your hand when you're picking. So here's the other thing. If people have an acoustic guitar, right, the, the natural tendency is for people to see, oh, there's a big sound hole there. Why don't I just plop my hand over there? People with electric guitar too, they say, oh, look at these things right here. Oh, there's a space there. Maybe let me just plop the pick right here. Here's the problem with that. Okay. You don't want to be floating. You notice how there's a space between my wrist and the guitar right there? If I'm playing like a little chord, let's say I'm just going to hold something, I'm going to do a little picking pattern where i got to jump around. See, I'm jumping, moving across those strings. Now, here's the problem. If I'm not staring at my right hand, okay, if I'm looking over here, if I'm floating, if I'm not making any contact with that guitar at all over here, how do I know what string my pick is going to hit? I don't. I have no reference. I have no physical reference. It's floating in the air. So this is the problem. When you want to start playing more intricate things, not just strumming. If you want to start playing power chords, solos, lots of things like this, we need to be more precise. We need to be able to feel the distances involved. So this is what we do. We take this part of the hand where it meets the wrist, and you want to actually plop that behind the strings resting on the bridge. Not way behind, right up to where they touch. Now, I'll tell you a story about this in a minute, this type of, of a bridge called a Floyd, Floyd Rose. And, but on most standard guitars, whether it's a fixed bridge or whether you have kind of a normal Stratocaster style tremolo, okay, it's nice and flat back there, so you want to keep your hand, boom, maintaining contact with the guitar. And you're going to try this. You're going to try to play the strings open very slowly, and you're going to see if you can move your hand down like this. See, I'm just letting that hand move like this. We don't want to stay here and curve. That's a no-no. Sometimes people plop good, but they do this. And you can see how uncomfortable that gets. It's going to be very difficult to pick. It's completely angled weird at that point. So we want to have the hand move with the pick, like so. And this takes some practice. Don't get frustrated if you can't do it right away. You want to make sure you're not muting the strings. That means that you're touching it too, too much over here. You have to back it up a little bit. Okay. I also take these two parts. See the little joints here on my pinky and my ring? I like to place those, especially when I'm playing down these thicker strings, so they actually touch some of these higher strings. Okay. That gives me the ability to kind of roll up and down a little bit if I need to open up my hand so that I don't mute the strings over here. So the overall idea is you want to have contact with this. It's okay to feel parts of your hand touching those other strings. It's okay to feel that bridge. Okay, we want to. It gives you that sense of learning the distance involved physically so that you don't have to stare at your right hand because we are going to have to be looking at this hand. It is more going on in this hand movement-wise. So we have to keep our our focus over here.